I uh, came across a report yesterday which is definitely welcome. Uh, I'm just going to read out uh, the report. Actually, it's in different sources. So I'll read out this one because it's quite concise from The Guardian. Um, and then offer some of my thoughts on this afterwards um, because it's good news, but I think there is still some ground for caution. So this is the report. Saudi Arabia to end flogging as a form of punishment. Doesn't say who the reporter is, um, but it's from The Guardian. Saudi Arabia is ending flogging as a form of punishment, according to a document from the Kingdom's top court. The decision by the General Commission for the Supreme Court, taken sometime this month, will mean the punishment will be replaced by prison sentences, fines, or a mixture of both. The decision is an extension of the human rights reforms introduced under the direction of King Salman and the direct supervision of Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, the document said. Flogging has been applied to punish a variety of crimes in Saudi Arabia without a codified system of law to go with the text making up Sharia or Islamic law. Individual judges will have the latitude to interpret religious texts and come up with their own sentences. Rights groups have documented past cases in which Saudi judges have sentenced criminals to flogging for a range of offences, including public intoxication, harassment and extramarital sex. This reform is a momentous step toward forward in Saudi Arabia's human rights record and may be one of many recent reforms in the kingdom, said Awad Alawud, the president of the state-backed Human Rights Commission. Other forms of corporal and capital punishment, such as amputation, theft or beheading for murder and terrorism offences, have not yet been outlawed. This is a welcome change, but it should have happened years ago, said Adam Kugel of Human Rights Watch. There's nothing now standing in the way of Saudi Arabia reforming its unfair judicial system. The Saudi Supreme Court said the latest reform was intended to bring the kingdom into line with international human rights norms against corporal punishment. The most high profile instance of flogging in recent years was the case of Saudi blogger Raif Badawi, that's a case I follow closely, who was sentenced to 10 years in prison and 1,000 lashes in 2014 for insulting Islam. He was awarded the European Parliament Sakharov Human Rights Prize the following year. The abolition of corporal punishment in Saudi Arabia comes just days after the kingdom's human rights record was again in the spotlight after news of the death from a stroke in custody of leading activist Abdullah Al Hamid. Hamid was a founding member of the Saudi Civil and Political Rights Association, ACPRA, and was sent to 11 years in jail in March 2013, campaigner said. He was convicted on multiple charges, including breaking allegiance to the Saudi ruler, inciting disorder and seeking to disrupt state security, Amnesty International said. Criticism of Saudi Arabia's human rights record has grown since King Salman named his son Mohammed, crown prince and heir to the throne in June 2017. The October 2018 murder of vocal critic uh, Hamal Hashogi inside the Saudi consulate in Istanbul and the increased repression of dissidents at home have overshadowed the prince's pledge to modernise the economy and society. So, um, yeah, it's it's a welcome move. Whatever way you look at it, there's, it's better than it not being there. However, those of us who care about human rights and those of us who are outraged that Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia was still practising this stuff up to now, um, I don't think we can be too complacent. Um, I, mean, I, I, I can't lie, I'm not heavily involved in the human rights activism that some people are. I'm interested in it as a human being, but I'm not, I'm not an activist. I'd be a liar if I said I was. I sign petitions, I make videos, um, and it's certainly something that concerns me, particularly as we are, it goes without saying, we are allies with Saudi Arabia. And yet this is a country that has some barbaric punishments the treatment of Raif Badawi was a disgrace. Now, let's be clear here, he is not being freed. He will still remain in prison. Um, he shouldn't be there. But what's happening in Saudi Arabia is that there are very gradually some reforms being made. The restrictions of women, for example, are very gradually easing, far too gradual. You know, women still need male custodians to leave their homes. But they won the battle with driving, as I understand it. Um, I um, I may be wrong about that. I, I believe that 
was won um, eventually. Um, but there is still a lot of ways that the kingdom needs to go. And the problem in uh, hardline Islamic theocracy, as Saudi Arabia is, is that the powers that be, and this is by no means an excuse, um, they know that sudden changes to hardliners would really, uh, really take issue with. And I'm not saying that's the reason not to do it. That might be the the reason it isn't faster. Um, that's the case in other very conservative Islamic societies, Pakistan, Iran, where there are moderates, so where there are flickers of moderation and progress, you can be damn sure there are hardline voices against it. So this is a little stepping stone in the path to progress. At least now, this has come from the top court. Um, I mean, dissidents are still being held in prison. You know, there's still prisoners of conscience. And according to this, um, local judges can still make their own interpretation. But at least if this is taken off the statute books, judges cannot use it because presumably they'd be breaking the, their own penal code if they do. So it's, I, I almost don't want to say better than nothing or better than never, because that sounds almost crass when there are still people out there in the kingdom who are under house arrest, or excuse me, not house arrest, they're still prisoners of conscience. The, you know, it's still dangerous to be an atheist in Saudi Arabia. Um, it's still, I noticed recently they had a PR campaign about tourism to the kingdom. Up till now, it wasn't, there was only very restrictive, um, obviously this is before coronavirus, I always have to put that caveat, but you know, they were very restrictive as to who they allowed into the kingdom. It was far stricter, for example, in the Gulf states in that regard. Um, obviously being the seat of Mecca, they had millions of pil pilgrims around the time of Hajj, um, and that came under huge scrutiny with its safety record. But I, um, it's better than it's better than it not being there. Let's put it that way. You know, abolishing this barbaric practice is better than it not being there at all. I would take anything that official sources say with caution. So, for example, this reform is a momentous step forward in Saudi Arabia's human rights agenda and nearly one of many recent reforms in the kingdom, said Awad Al Awad, the president of the State Back Human Rights Commission. You know, that's clearly biased. Um, it's partly true. There have been some reforms. Some things have changed. But there is a very long way to go before Saudi Arabia can boast about its human rights record. A very long way. It's still among the world's worst offenders. Um, but this should be a message to the likes of Eritrea, Iran, China, and a host of other regimes that really have utter disregard for some basic basic human rights um, that there is a long way to go. Now, in the case of China, the human rights isn't the same sort of human rights abuses in the sense that women in China have a lot more freedom than they do in Saudi Arabia or Iran. So there's less, less of a gender issue with China, but with China, it's just critique of the regime. It is Host of other issues that have been exposed by COVID-19. The world's human rights situation, I think, has taken a bit of a downturn in the last sort of five years with the rise of these so-called strongman leaders. Um, and, you know, with coronavirus, who will be authoritarian leaders who see that as an invitation to tighten the grip on power. So by no means is a global situation anything to shout about. But anything that can be seen as an improvement has to be welcomed. And the Saudis will see it pays off. It improves their international reputation. So it's in their interest to improve. Um, the situation in Sudan has improved. The revolution last year genuinely brought in uh, some positive signs. Um, there was bloodshed. But the point about that was it was led by women. And it was a backlash against Islamic ideology, Islamist ideology in Sudan. So I would say the world situation, situation is never all bad or all good. COVID-19 could, um, could definitely increase authoritarianism and may actually reduce armed conflict on some level. So 
with the human rights situation, there is a very long way to go, but it is what it is. It's at least now in statute, this is from the top court, at least now, whilst prisoners will still be subject to long detentions, you know, as prisoners of conscience, which is appalling, at least they're not going to suffer this um, degrading and barbaric flogging. I mean, being flogged a thousand times, and you know, they've done it in a particular way, so as the victim wouldn't die from blood loss. So for example, they, as I understand it, do 50 lashes, then actually they treat them. You know, they put vinegar or whatever it is on the victim's back, wait a week, then give them another 50 lashes, uh, and they just add it up basically over time, which in some ways is even worse because it prolongs the suffering. Um, but I'd imagine flogging someone a thousand times, they'd probably die from a heart attack or from blood loss. It's a barbaric, barbaric practice. So at, if nothing else, at least we know for now, that's out of the way. That is no longer going to be used. The kingdom still locks up prisoners of conscience. It still has public executions. It's a very long way to go. But if nothing else, its treatment of Vafius is appalling. Um, but at least this is, is done. And, you know, there may be hardliners who want to bring that back, depending on which direction the monarchy takes uh, with the internal politics of that. But it's welcome. It is welcome news. And I just hope they go much further. So their boasting of the human rights agenda will prove it. Go further, release prisoners of conscience. I'd say give them compensation, but that's never going to happen. At least release them. No one should be in jail for having an opinion. You know, to treat atheists like terrorists, it's appalling. But welcome news at least to have this.